Thank you so much. It's great honor to be here. It's my second time. First one is three years before. Uh, my topic today is endoscopic ULVD. So my disclosure. So my personal disclosure is Luke in the Bible and the Skywalker. <laughs> okay. Interlaminal full endospine surgery has the generations, the first generation, second, and third, and fourth. So nowadays, many the industry and vendors, they have the spinal stenosis uh, scope from the first, and I'd like to, personally, I'd like to say the first and second and third generation. And the, here is a working channel endoscope for spinal stenosis. Most the vendors, they already set up the endoscope for the spinal stenosis. So indication has been changed so much. The firstly, we have just treat the lumbar disc herniation, but nowadays we can treat the spinal stenosis, uh, central stenosis, and the ratulisis and, and foraminal stenosis combined pathology as well. This is phases in the procedure lumbar endoscopy ULBD from the pre-op planning to the complete release of the neural element. Because of time limitation, I, I, gonna say, I don't like to say the whole the procedure, so I'm gonna focus on basic and some case illustration. So most important is target. Where is the target for the lumbar endoscopy ULBD is the uh, inferior medial edge of the upper laminar, because from that point, we can start the laminotomy and using this kind, various kind of the uh, drills and the pawns and scissors like that. So this is the example of the lumbar endoscopy ULVD. The starting point, inferior medial cranial edge laminar is already exposed. We can start the laminotomy from the cranial side using the straight type and tick control type, burr, and, not, and then we can move to midline portion to compression. And the outer layer ligament problem was exposed and then we can start the drilling to the contractor side from the cranial to caudal side, and eventually we can decompress contractor lateral recess as well. Because of optics is 25 degree and the eyes of the surgeon's eyes already uh, go inside the spinal canal, we can see the uh, decompress the end margin of the, the laminar very well. And then we can make it the uh, complete decompression of the ligament problem by one piece. Looks like the uh, end block resection. And then finally, we can decompress. Yeah, this is a uh, remove uh, of the ligament problem by end block resection. We can see the decompressed traversing and central and the contractor side. So, so full endoscopic VLVD has much more power because the, the, our, our eyes, surgeon's eye already inside the spinal canal, even though the patient have the combined pathology with the foraminal stenosis, uh, having the uh, central stenosis, we can approach the ipsilateral side first and then uh, change the trajectory. We can control, we can treat the contractile ratiolysis and the contractile uh, foraminal decompression as well. Because uh, already Professor Roger Hart already published tubular, tubular microscopic ULB and uh, contractal foraminotomy, same surgery could be done by the endoscope. Like that, right? Okay, so this is case examples. Patient has the uh, bilateral leg pain and the bilateral. The comfort bilateral disaster patient also have the weakness. You can see the spondylitis is at a threefold level. This is one of the good indication of the endoscopic ULVD with preserve the facet joint maximally. This is the we can uh, step down the decomp step down the surgical procedure if we want to do the decompression, open and tubular and the endoscope and the. This is surgical video. Initially, uh, we dock the tube on over the laminar and expose the cranial laminar first. Oh. Video is not. 
completely. Okay. Anyway, I am gonna show you the post of city. You can see the post of city. Even in Ipswich side, we can preserve the fastest joint as much as possible because endoscope has the 20, 20 degree and the interlaminar scope has some some industries has a 15 degree. Anyway, by the ton this scope, we can preserve, we can see the Ipswich side and preserve the Ipswich facet uh, very much effectively. That's the very important to preserve the patient stability and you can see the no aggravation of the spondy recesses there. This is another the case review and the single shot and killing the tubers. You can see the patient x-ray degenerative spondylosis patient patient has the bilateral leg pain and weakness. She complained is bilateral foot drop. Very complicated patient has the Parkinson's disease and the history of DBS. You can also see in the MRI has shown the bilateral down myric disc coordination like this way and patient has underlying the spinal, moderate spinal stenosis. Patient has the Parkinson's disease. So clinical and nodular diagnosis like that, the L45 bilateral subarticular down myric disc coordination, moderate spinal stenosis, and foot drop. So surgical option, most surgeons agree to the T-lip surgery, right? Uh, because patient has bilateral down margin discrimination, central and uh, stenosis, lateral release stenosis. So if we want to do the endos uh, decompression alone, what kind of the uh, surgical option going to be best? So let me show the case by the treated by the endoscope. This is surgical plan. There's two kind of the problem. Central stenosis, actually three kind. Central stenosis, okay, and bilateral migrate disc coordination. Yeah. So, let's see. So I did the lumbar endoscopic ULBD with discectomy. So prone position, general anesthesia, and left side approach. You can, the first thing we have to do is the ideal planning and desired trajectory. Uh, draw the line along the midline and medial pedicle and the end plate on lateral CM image. And then we can start the drilling from the ipsilateral to the cranial side and then move to the caudal side. And once the ipsilateral bone work is achieved, finished, we can move to the contralateral side and try to release the rheumatoid flabum to remove rheumatoid flabum by envelope fashion. This is the figures grasping the ligand flabum by envelope, and then we can see the dual ipsilateral com completely decompressing ipsilateral. There is a little bit remnant ligand flabum, and then using the small drill, we can decompress. This is the video to re remove removing the ipsilateral discoloration, disc label, there is the axial portion because patient has the imperial migrate discoloration by the small uh, scope. We can remove, retreat the down migrate discoloration from ischial side, and then we can move to contralateral side. This is contralateral side. We can also see the contralateral axial portion. There is a down migrate discoloration. So finally, we remove we. Removed completely, we release both uh, both traversing the nerve root completely. This is how I did. You can see the for the contralateral approach, we made a, this angle, right? Okay. So result is that no blood, and outcome was excellent. You can see the patient foot drop improved and the ambulation. Uh, it's very too low. Okay. So because of time limitation, I'm going to move to the conclusion. Okay. By the lumbar endoscopy ULBD, we can treat most of the spinal stenosis and combine the disc coordination, even though the combined foraminal stenosis. 
We can also preserve the patient stability with the less violation of the motion segment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Luke. Are there any questions or comments? Yes. Look, one question. I find it sometimes difficult to actually get the cranial part of the ligamentum flavum away in uh, um, in central spinal stenosis, like we saw it on the tubular. In the you ischial actually... side or contralateral side? Uh, ipsilateral. Ipsilateral side. Right. Um, you start more in, in stenotic cases. You start a little bit more on the lamina, on yeah. the upper lamina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Keep going. Hi, um, I think a big advantage of endoscopic uh, decompression in such a setting is that it allows you to get a better decompression of the ipsilateral foramen because you can use the articulating bear and you can drill deep under the facet. And also you can angulate a little bit more laterally by because the, the endoscope is very thin, so you can go in the intraspinous ligament and get a few more uh, degrees of uh, lateral looking inside the, uh, the foramen. That's, these are the advantages versus you know using a tube. Yeah, that's a good point. Comment. The ipsilateral foramen the compression combined the central stenosis through the ipsilateral way is quite challenging because the ipsilateral foramen for the compressed ipsilateral foramen, the by endoscope, even though the, we have the optic angle, is still difficult to make the proper angle. I mean, the case the, that is the uh, contralateral foramen, uh, contralateral foramen decompression. Uh, Contralateral through the contralateral interlaminal decompression for targeting the contralateral foramen, right? For the pure foramen decompression, I uh, preserve the uh, modified wheels trajectory. Any uh, is any uh, role for the bo bone scalpel? Is there an endoscopic bone scalpel? Would that be helpful? Yeah, very helpful, but. Commercially, it is not available in the market. Only one uh, company in China is available. They made it very nice, the bone scalpel, uh, available in, inside the endoscope. But the other size, no. Yeah. What about tubular? Anybody use bone scalpels through tubular surgery? Do you find them helpful? We've tried to use them, but they're very, very bulky. You know, it's hard to put them through a tube. I have a, a good experience uh, with uh, mysonics. The problem, problem with the mysonics uh, bone scalpel is uh, the size and length of the, the cutters. Uh, I tried also the Chinese bone scalpel, uh, scalpel that is nicer, thinner, more useful in, in spine surgery. But still, any of them uh, are made for tubular, um, at least the small tube knot. I know that's too. You know, the, the, the main, in, in preparation for the next presentation, we have a few minutes, but I mean, the main challenge that I see from tub, doing a lot of tubular surgery is re removal of the ligament and flavum, right? The whole, the goal of the operation is to remove the ligament because that's what's causing the stenosis. And I think even, even if you do a lot of tubular surgery, to, to do a really good decompression, what we consider a good decompression takes, I would say, at least 30 minutes for one level. Now, and then with endoscopic surgery, it's really hard for me to imagine that you really can effectively remove all that ligament with the endoscope. I mean, what is it? Is there something I'm missing or, or <laughs> okay. So how do, you, how, how do you get like really to a, to a point where you're really fast? The, the, there's a few steps. The first step is that you open up the interlaminar window that you can actually position the scope on the yellow ligament. Um, this allows you that you have less muscle impingement. And then, uh, because you can actually lever the endoscope, you can uh, you can use the burr with the side cutting function and um, open it up, split it in the middle, take it away. I would say a normal stenotic case takes me not more than 45 minutes. So we're getting into a range where it gets uh, actually quite fast. I think two things are different. So we, I, I rarely have problems with the caudal uh, attachment of the yellow ligament, where you said in the tubular surgery you have a high risk of uh, damaging the dura. I don't see that because actually with the irrigation, 
uh, once you open it up, it's, it pushes it away. I have more problems in the upper part because in the in the decompression surgery I use the bigger scope and it's more difficult to get that angulation. So what I do now is I, I start more on the caudal lamina rather than on the interarticular portion where we saw it. But that's still the issue. I tried to do it with an osteotome uh, through the scope, but it still was not perfect. Perhaps with a good angulated bone drill, you can uh, undermine it. The contralateral side normally is no problem. It's the ipsilateral cranial part. Um, so what they say is from the tip of the SAP to the base of the SAP, that's where we uh, define uh, the lateral recess. Um, that's where you decompress. And now sometimes you ha just have to take an x-ray before. All right. We've got a lot of smart people here. What about, is, is anything available that kind of melts away the ligament and flavum? Are there any devices, any technology? Since what we do in the OR is really removal of the ligament, is anything, I'm sure you've seen this in Laser. Asia. Yeah, I mean, other than the, you know, the laser, but, but, you, but who wants to use it? I, I think what the key is that you go, uh, that you keep the yellow ligament and you go with the dissector and kind of uh, um, split it from the bone, and then you can take it out in one bite, as you saw it um, in, in Lucas' uh, talk. Uh, the contralateral side is easy because you actually can stay on the bone and, and right. detach it. This is the same, similar to the tubular surgery. All right, great. 